Hey, superstars, this is my October recap. I'm doing too many video responses today. You guys are maniacs lately with all your contests and giveaways, but uh, it's fun. I've got too many care packages. You guys are maniacs with all your care packages and generosity, but uh, I do appreciate it. And I've got too many pickups to show off. I'm a bit of a maniac too, I guess. So uh, let's get this thing started. I did not do a video response for Mike Baseball Collector's pet peeve thing on time, but I still wanted to show my support because Mike's been good to me. Uh, you know the drill, Mike wanted to hear about our hobby pet peeves, so everybody made a video about scotch tape. My pet peeve is kind of silly. It's about the term collector grade. Uh, that's that thing where you're supposed to buy a card in a grade corresponding with the card's decade. So a card from the 50s, you're supposed to look for a five or above, uh, 60s cards in a six, 70s cards in a seven, and so on and so forth. To me, a sports card collector can collect whatever grade he wants, or he can buy raw cards, or he can have all authentic cards, as long as it makes him happy. You know, we can collect whatever he wants. I think that collector grade should actually be called investor grade, but uh, just a silly little thing. It triggers me a little bit. But uh, I'll be okay. Moving on. My buddy John, aka Wade Boggs fan, is celebrating 1,000 well-earned subs. John is a great guy and I'm super happy for him. He simply wants five shout outs for channels with less than 500 subs. So in no particular order, I think you should go check out The Drew, A Vintage Legacy. The Drew rarely shows cards, but he tells great stories and he's almost as cute as Drew Barrymore. Uh, Dean Gerhardt, yeah, I collect it all. Great name, great channel. Dean is a postman and I've always secretly wanted to be a postman. He also collects every sports card he can get his hands on. Uh, Staven Sports Cards, Dom is a great dude. Um, I met him at the National and then I commented on one of his videos that I was sorry that I didn't get to meet him at the National because I am a dummy, but uh, he was very nice about it. So I owe him at least a shout out, but he really deserves it. He's got great taste and a very, very cool collection. Hall of Fame Poolers, Chris, I don't know why he doesn't have more subs, but just an amazing collection of Hall of Fame autographs that he acquires through uh, TTM or private signings. That's really, really cool stuff. And then there's Shane from Shoebox Legends, another really fun collection. Super consistent with creating content and his dog Leo steals the show. So I highly encourage you to go check out those guys if you haven't already, but uh, that's enough of this beautiful face. Let's see some baseball cards. I actually struggled quite a bit with this one. Four Leaf wants to see beautiful cards. Everybody's idea of beauty is different, obviously. I think I gravitate towards very graphic heavy cards where the background is very simple, you know, and it enhances the player. Destruction Crew is a good example of that. You have three players, which can get really busy. Uh, this is my favorite combo card, by the way, Dylan. But that simple yellow circle on the orange background just ties them all together. These 64 top stand-up cards are just so bold and pow. Uh, same goes for the red heart cards. Both the red ones and the blue ones are just so stunning. Um, they don't have to be a plain solid color to be simple. This Diamond Stars Earl Averill is just fantastic. And I've shown this off quite a few times recently, but this 49 Leaf Jim Hegan is just so great. You might think that the uh, 1958 Don Mossy would be the most beautiful card I own. Look at that. It is close, but the most beautiful card in my eyes is this 33 Worldwide Gum Willie Calm. It's got that great red background, but there's something magical about this card that I just can't quite put my finger on. My BFF, Austin F, simply wants to see what cards we'd put in a showcase or show off a showcase if we have one. Uh, my mom just bought me this showcase in September, actually. She found it at a local auction for $3. Go, mom! Anyway, I just showed off a few of these cards, but this is what I got in there right now. Some fun vintage stuff, but it might be time to change them out. It is really neat to have your cards displayed where you can catch a glimpse of them every day. B-Roth 6, B-Roth, Roth, card soup.
I just got that. Hey, awesome. Anyway, B. Roth wants to see a card that's been defaced in a humorous way. He is not encouraging you to do that yourself, but if you have a defaced card that you enjoyed, then, then share it. Speaking of beautiful cards, here is another 1958 Don Mossy gifted to me by Andy from Flying Dutchman Cards and his brother Doug from Don't Talk to Robots. I can't make rhyme or reason out of these scribbles, but Don's got a cool half mustache and some sort of creature on its forehead. I just love this card. Last one, us Scott's got to stick together. And when I saw that Scott Maz hit 103 subs and was asking to see a set that we like, I had to throw this in too. You know I love vintage, but I would love to build a 92 Tops kid set. Um, I bought this box to start that, but it was a little pricey and I can't bring myself to open it. But I just think the set is so much fun. I talked about uh, cards being graphic and these are right up my alley. I just yesterday bought a uh, starter set off eBay, so I can get that going now. Mike, the vintage composer, recently went to the Philly show and he knew I had to have this. Ooh, nice. A Lou Boudreaux signed Dick Perez great moments. I guess I'm not sure what you call these. This is pretty awesome, Mike. Thanks, man. This one is from Rick. Vintage Oddball Cards says, Scott, thanks again for the Maddie painting. These cards need to be in your collection. Ooh, a dandy Bob Lemon and a Burke Ross Bob Feller. Not only did I not have these cards, I did not have any of these cards from these sets and I'd been looking to pick some up. I had previously kind of dismissed them, but it's different to have them in hand, you know? You gain a different appreciation for the cards. So cool. I love them. Thanks, Rick. A package from D... <laughs> I'm sure that'll never get old. Scott, thanks for sharing your talents with us and just being an awesome person in the card community. Aw, I'm just really showing off, Doug. Here is a pack of 22 Heritage, 89 Don Russ. Sweet, exhibit Bob Feller. I did not have that one either. 206 Bieber, Sepia Fire, Dr. Styx rookie, super sparkly Andre Semenis rookie. Uh, Doug and I share an affinity for Andres. There's Rube Waddell, Bob Lemon, Hosey, Andres, Andres first Bowman Chrome Mojo. Ooh, nice. A 53 Bowman Al Rosen. I have this one, but it is one of my favorite cards and I'm thrilled to have another. Great color on that one too. Uh, let's rip some packs. Tony, Eck, Ozzy, Ripken, Robbie Alomar. Five Hall of Famers in that pack. Not bad. Let's see what's in here. Matt Chapman, um, some guys, this Aaron Judge guy, Watergate, and that's about it. I guess you're supposed to look at the backs of these, but uh, killer stuff, Doug. Thanks, buddy. This one is from Don's Field of Dreams cards. We were recently told that we're like an old married couple. So I love you, buddy. Scott, just a little gift for all that you've given me, Don. Nice. A uh, 2002 Fleer Authentic. Jim Tomey. That's a pretty slick looking card. Although that's not a seat number at Jacobs Field. No wonder Fleer went out of business. I mean, thanks, Don. Very cool. Let's see what we got here. This is from Jason, the basement card collector. He's got a newer channel and it's pretty neat, pretty active in the community so far. So he's doing it right. Uh, what's in here? A very well loved 54 Bowman George Strickland. That's awesome. 67 Bob Allen. This is an 83 Cracker Jack Bob Feller. I've been on the hunt for one of these. Neat. Uh, Cookie and Kluber, Francisco, some stickers. Ooh, nice. A Chelsea Ross autograph. He played Eddie Harris in Major League, and this was right after he drank Joe Boo's rum. That is so cool. Thanks, Jason. Alrighty, time to show off what I bought in October. These are N85 cards from 1889. Enough said cards recently did a great video about these and I saw Gronchuk also picked one up. So they were issued with cigarettes and they'd have a stamp right here. This one has a kid bugging a guy coming out from a smoke shop to give him his trading cards. And this one depicts a bunch of kids enjoying their Duke stamps cards. The stamps are missing and these aren't in good shape at all, but I paid two bucks for this one and four bucks for this one, I think. Just a very cool piece of collecting history. This is a 1928 Yingling's ice cream card of George Uli. Uh, Yingling is a brewery, but they started making ice cream during the prohibition to stay in business. George Uli here was a pretty good pitcher. He led the league in wins in 1923 and 26, and Babe Ruth said he was the toughest pitcher he ever faced. Here is a 1954 autographed Al Rosen. I'm slowly working on his autographed playing run. From the 1920 Cleveland World Series team, here's an autograph from first baseman George H. Burns. Excellent. He also won an MVP in 1926. 
Need to be able to add that one. Here's an autographed Bo Nailer card. Bo made his debut with the Guardians this year. I did not need another Bob Feller autograph, but I found this signed photo of Bob hanging out with Cy Young. That one's pretty sweet. I bought these off a Facebook group for 20 bucks each. Hard to pass that up. Here is Tristan McKenzie and Terry Francona on a 2016 World Series ball. And finally, to get into the Halloween spirit, I picked up another Mars Attacks card. I have four now. I'm not sure if I'm going to work on the set, but I'm very happy to add these occasionally. They're super fun. Uh, a couple other things while I have you. I am officially opening the commission waiting list as of this moment right here. I've got a few of your names on there already, but please send me an email if you'd like me to work on something for you and we'll discuss details. Also, I'm doing No Card November again. That's where I don't buy myself any cards, just kind of an exercise in self-control and a way to focus on enjoying what I have for a little bit. So wish me luck. I thought that was it, but Don's Field of Dreams cards went and asked for yet another video response. <sighs> but uh, Donnie wants to see a card that has some sort of sappy sentimental value or something. I've shown this Roy Hobbs card uh, that my son made for me quite a few times because I absolutely love it. In 2018 and 19, we watched quite a few baseball movies together, including Field of Dreams, uh, fitting for a Don response. But this is Milo's card, actually. He was with me at the National that year, and he saw Dwyer Brown, who played John Kinsella in Field of Dreams, and he knew exactly who he was. Milo ran over to him, and Mr. Brown asked Milo if he wanted to have a catch. He gave Milo a mitt, and I watched in amazement as they threw the ball back and forth. It was just a very surreal moment for me seeing the dad from Field of Dreams having a catch with my kid. I couldn't even bring myself to take a picture or video or anything, but uh, yeah, that is something that I will never forget. That is it for now. Thanks for watching all this stuff. Go check out baseball collector Wade Box Fan and the guys I mentioned for his giveaway. The Drew, Dean Gerhardt, Staven Sports Cards, Hall of Fame Poolers, and Shoebox Legends. Uh, go check out Four Leaf Cards, Austin F., B. Roth, Scott Maz. Thanks again to Mike the Vintage Composer, Rick from Vintage Oddball Cards, D. Con, my hobby spouse, Don's Field of Dreams Cards, and the Basement Card Collector. And of course, thank you guys for watching. I'm working hard on that last Grail Quest commission, so we'll see you when that's all done. Oh, I almost forgot. This is not a 500 home run club response for elite hunters, but here is a signed Manny Ramirez ball. A Manny rookie, 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 a a Manny rookie, a signed Jim Tomey ball, signed Jimmy Art, a Jimmy rookie, 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 oh, and an Eddie Murray rookie. I don't have an Eddie autograph yet.